The M4 MacBook Air is a fantastic laptop. It's not only shown to be super powerful, but very energy efficient, getting excellent battery life, and with enough power to run some high end test tasks when needed. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through my favorite tips and tricks, as well as hidden features you need to know if you just picked up one of these amazing machines. And of course, timestamps to everything will be in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's get started. Let's start off by quickly physically checking your device just to verify this was indeed a new purchase Mac computer because the first giveaways is by looking at one of these feeds. If you see like little smears or dust particles on here right after you unboxed it, that's a clear sign that this was either open box or return. Another day giveaway is the Apple logo if you see like smears or fingerprints on it. Again, that's a return or possibly an open box that the retail stores just sold to you. This only happened to me once at Costco and a few times at Target and one time at Best Buy, I believe. But on Apple's website, they're pretty much strict when it comes to selling you an open box or a return item. But after a physical check, you already went ahead and completed the setup procedure. You either merged your Mac computer from an old machine or set up as a new one. And then, of course, you set it up with Touch ID to unlock. But I think I always like to do first before I do anything else is add more fingerprints to the Touch ID. This way I could use any other finger, no matter the angle. I am. If I'm working one handed, I can still unlock my machine without manually having to enter my passcode. So, by quickly going into your system settings in the system setting tab, this window will pop up. Scroll down until you see Touch ID and Password right here. And on the very top, you'll see a section where you can add fingerprints. Add print into your password and then just begin scanning. Keep in mind you can add yourself, a spouse, or anybody else who you want to also have access to your machine to add their fingerprints as well. This way you allow more users that you trust to have access to your laptop. If this is like your household shared laptop. But I'll also show you how you can set it up so you can, so you can create custom profiles. This way everybody has their own data separated. And as you see, you can only add up to three. And then as an added bonus, if you have an Apple Watch, you can also allow it so your Apple Watch can unlock your Mac so long as you're nearby. In this same menu, just scroll down until you see the Apple Watch section. And then select the Apple Watch and enable, and it will automatically synchronize. So now if we close our laptop and we open it, it's gonna tell us right here that the Apple Watch unlocked our Mac. Just keep in mind, if somebody does snatch your laptop and they open it and you happen to be near, nearby, they'll have access to your laptop. But again, it will send you a notification when your Mac was unlocked. But let's say you do want to have a separate profile created for a different user so you don't share data between each of you guys' folder. On the very top menu right here, scroll down until you find user and groups. In here, you can not only enable guest user if you want a guest to always have access to your laptop, but you can create user into your password and then you could set up an account for them and you could give them administrator power sharing only or standard and then just enter their account information password and that's how you could create multiple passwords under the same machine just real quick guys if you've been enjoying this video so far if you could take two seconds to hit that like button a like that would be truly appreciated as that not only strongly supports the channels but allows others to find this video easier and also lets me continue making these non-sponsor integrated ad videos so you get the information quicker without like a minute segment of a vpn so by hitting that like button like that helps out a lot so thank you to those that did that now let's carry on now although my macbook air is the 15 inch version if i want more screen real estate space the dock down here if you hover the arrow over here the cursor you could also increase the size or decrease the size from here to give you more additional screen real estate space. Again, just hover the cursor over here and then just long hold and you could just minimize it or increase the size. In addition to that, if you have some icons here that you find yourself never using, you could always just click and drag them like so, long hold, and it'll go away. This will give you quick access to quickly eliminate those unwanted apps you're never gonna use and give yourself more space right down here. And if you wish to add some of these icons, just go in your launch pad section and then manually just click and drag it and long hold and it'll appear right here. But if you like these docks to automatically go away whenever you're not using it, there's a setting you can change to have access to that. Simply go into your system settings and then look for desktop and dock. Select it. Here on this row over here, you can enable it so it'll automatically hide the dock when it's not in use. And by having it set up like this, now whenever I move my cursor, it will appear and will go away, giving you additional screen real estate space 
in case you need it. But again, this is all personal preference. I like having the dock in here. But over here, you'll find the magnify section, which by enabling this, whenever your cursor goes over one of these icons, it enlarges, making it easier for you to click. And adds a cool little effect. Also works when you make it super small. Now, change your wallpaper is probably the coolest thing you can do on a Mac now, because some of these wallpapers, if we lock our device, it's animated as the background's literally moving automatically. And this is all built into the Mac. So by right clicking it on the menu, you can change your wallpaper and you have all these dynamic wallpapers to select from. But my favorite ones are landscape as they create this aerial shot effect. And I think it looks really cool. And there are sections down here like underwater as an example, earth. You just need to download these. And of course you can create custom ones as well. But some of these just look absolutely fantastic. And it will give you the download stats right above here. And there we go, now it's installed. Now each latest generation Mac does have the multi desktop ability by selecting here this will take you to the command center which if you open like a lot of pages as an example i'm gonna go ahead and open a couple things just to give you a demonstration you see i have a lot of windows open up at once by either tapping the f3 key or using the trackpad and using three fingers and swiping up this will enter command center in here, you can select between the many different windows that are open in the background. And by selecting one, if it's too small, you could tap space and it will enlarge it. You could also select some of these other icons in front of space, like this uh, image right here that I have selected. If I tap space, it will enlarge it without me having to physically open up the photo app just to see it. They could enlarge this way, like a cool little shortcut just by doing this. But the beauty about entering this desktop mode, on top here, you have two different desktops. So you can have two different work pages open up at once. So if I have something I'm doing research on Safari right here on desktop one that I'd like to resume later, but I don't want to fully close it, I can always enter desktop one and complete whatever tasks I need to get done first and then jump between this desktop and the other one by either holding down the control key and just use the arrow key to quickly switch from one desktop to the other. It's like multitasking, but to the next level, but using one single desktop monitor. And I personally love using this, especially when I'm like editing a video on one desktop and then jump to the other one. If I'm photo editing like a thumbnail, this is how I use it to my advantage. But it helps a lot by having two separate wallpapers so I know which desktop I'm jumping between. And if you need to create more, three finger swipe up, you'll see the desktop tab right above here. And here I could either tap plus and it'll create another desktop. And I believe I could have like up to five, Never mind, six seven eight you can create a lot and once you're done with them you could just tap x and it will actually go away but if you like to change the wallpaper to them just quickly select one right click change wallpaper and make sure you disable show on all spaces and then select the screensaver or wallpaper you like to select and exit out and do it again and you'll notice you have two different desktops just for some reason this one didn't update i think it's because i hit exit but again you can always just long hold and exit it like so so now we have two different desktops, two different workspace open at once. The next thing I highly recommend doing is customizing your trackpad. By launching system settings and going to the system settings tab, if you scroll down to trackpad right in here, you have the ability to not only change the track speed if you like to increase the speed or not, but the click if you want it to be more firm or lighter. We can enable the haptic feedback if you don't like feeling the haptic feedback whenever you press down. But if you like to change away from the traditional right click with two fingers, you can always enable tap to click, which will just use a longer press to click. Personal preference right here, but one that I highly recommend going over is the natural scrolling. You see, if we open up Safari, and I go ahead and open up like a random document, to scroll down, I have to scroll up with my fingers. Some people don't like that. So if you like to reverse back to the traditional one, disable natural scrolling, and now if we scroll down, it will actually allow us to scroll down. So personal preference right here, but that's how you could disable natural scrolling. Now let's talk about the best keyboard shortcuts. If you like to take a screenshot, simply hold down Command, Shift, and 5. And then this window will pop up. From here, you could decide if you like to capture only the screen, or you could do the entire window, or sections to take a screenshot. And then you also have the ability to record the entire screen, or a certain section portion that you like to be screen recorded. And if you tap options, here you could just change it so you could include microphone. You could use either your Macs or your nearby iPhone or another Apple product like an iPad. 
and then you just tap record or take a screenshot. So here I took this screenshot and if you look, it is only that window. And again, not sure if you caught that, by simply highlighting the image, I could just tap space and it will show me the image without me having to double tap and having the photo app to be launched. Another cool shortcut is the ability to delete. Instead of hitting right click and going into delete or move to trash, you can also just select and then just click on both command and delete and it will automatically move it to the trash bin. Then we should be familiar with the control center icons right here, which gives you quick access to your brightness, your sound, the media that's playing, stage management, your focus modes. But if you find yourself constantly using like Bluetooth or something like that or AirDrop even, you could always just click and drag it and drop it to the top icon and it will stay right above here. So you have the ability like AirDrop to quickly always have it to everybody or contacts only or to disable it entirely from here instead of manually having to go in control center. So all these icons you see here, you can literally just click and drag it and it'll stay up here, giving you a faster shortcut. And if you decide you don't need these anymore, just hold down the command and click and drag it out and then let go and it'll delete. Now the MacBook Air has an amazing battery life, but it only works when low power mode is enabled. But I have my computer set up, so when low power mode is enabled, it's running in its most efficient stage. But when I plug in like this power adapter as an example, low power mode will automatically disengage and allow this machine to perform at its fullest. If you like to enable this ability where it will automatically go into low power mode, giving the maximum battery life as much as possible under a single charge, go into your battery icon and scroll down until you find battery settings. Click on it and on the very top where it says low power mode, you can change it to always, but kind of defeat the purpose when it's plugged in or only go on when the power adapter is uh, plugged in. But by leaving it on, on battery, it will automatically enable low power mode, maximizing your battery life under a single charge as soon as it's disconnected from a power source. And then lastly, if you're curious how I'm able to monitor my CPU temperatures right here, as well as my CPU performance numbers in terms of like percentage being used, I'm using a third party app. I'll have a link in the description down below. It is a one-time purchase, but it has been extremely useful, especially since I'm using a fanless Mac. I can monitor when it's actually throttling. So I could put like a, a lap cooler underneath to help keep it cool. Again, most users, I understand they're not gonna be, most likely will never have to use this. I do video editing sometimes. So sometimes when I'm exporting like a 4K video, I do need that cooling to help this machine stay happy for a much longer duration. And then another amazing upgrade you could do with your MacBook Air, if you did upgrade your power brick to the 70 watt, this power brick is absolutely amazing because not only does it use USB-C, which means you can use like your iPhone and stuff to like charge it, but this cable simply disattaches and will allow you to upgrade the length if you need a longer reach cable instead of having this brick fall off the power wall to something longer. This is the official one I've been using from Apple and I have it for like longer than 10 years now and it's been working extremely well. But another amazing thing you can do with a power brick is you can buy universal adapters as Apple does sell a universal adapter kit which simply just plugs in right here. So regardless which region you're in, you can still continue using your same power adapter to charge your not just your laptop but also other devices as well. All again thanks to that USB-C. I have links to these accessories in the description down below. And just like that, now you are a pro when it comes to using your MacBook Air to its full potential. Let me know in the comment section which one of these was your personal favorite, and if there's one we might have missed and you also recommend, feel free to comment down below for the rest of us. After all, we are community driven, so by doing that, you're helping out and allowing others to also get the best value out of their devices. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys for watching today's video. And if you'd like to watch more, maybe you haven't yet set up CarPlay to its full potential, highly recommend checking out this video over there where I show you some interesting settings that a lot of people never thought about and overlooked, including the capability to automatically stop the annoying auto playability when you get in your car in Apple CarPlay. I show you a clever way to disable that in that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.